Free will, of course, means that you are allowed to have any thought you wish. And you're also allowed to develop any desire you wish. And you're allowed to have any passion you wish. Now, if you can think about it from a point of view of a pristine soul. And remember I said to you right in the beginning that the first human couple's biggest mistake, and only, in fact, mistake that they made, was this desire to be God rather than to become God-reliant. In the process of this desire to be God, they detuned or di they disconnected from God. They committed what you would say was the greatest sin. I talked about this in the first century a lot, called the sin of the Holy Spirit. You've heard of that? And what that is, is a denial of God's love. So God's love being offered to you, and because, for whatever reason, you decide to not accept it. Now, remember the first human couple were in a state of perfection. Being in a state of perfection, they didn't have any emotional injuries determining whether they accepted God's love or not. All they had was their free will. They were allowed to accept it, or they were allowed to reject it. And what happened is they allowed a desire within themselves to develop. The desire to be like God, but to be like God without God. And that desire developed more and more and more until it, and like every desire that develops out of harmony with love, it gives birth to what I would call sin, or disharmony with love, actions that are disharmonious with love. And so they made the choice, a free will choice, to step away from God. Now in that free will choice, they created a fragmentation between themselves and God. So, inside of their soul, and this, there's another factor in amongst all of this. Remember the soul at the point of this stage, when it, before incarnation, is pristine. When it incarnates, in the first human couple case, it incarnated in a pristine state. Right? So we've got the male and female split, and you've got the two bodies attached to each part of the soul. The two bodies being the spirit body and the material body. Now what happens is that this soul, God has put in instinctually one particular thing that is a huge thing in fact. And that is the instinct of love. The instinct of natural love is what he placed inside of each of you. Now whenever you break a natural love principle, there is a knowing inside of the soul that that is actually occurring while you're doing it. But most often what we try to do is detune from it, detune from the fact that we're doing it. In other words, we go along, do something, but we're detuned from the fact that we've just harmed our own soul. Does that make sense? And because we detune from harm to our own soul, we also make the next step, which is detuning from the harm of when we harm other souls. Can you see? Yep. Now once you start getting into that state where you've detuned from your own soul, truth through choice, and you've detuned from the harm towards other souls, whether it's you doing it or other people doing it, that, that gives birth to many, many very, dis you know, very destroying things when it comes to life here on Earth. And that's what's given birth from thereafter to the most of the so-called sin that we see or the disharmony with love that we see on the earth today. And what we need to do is make the choice to undo that process. The choice is inside of you to undo that process. Nobody else can undo that process for you. So there is no, you know, like sacrifice that I've done for you that will help you undo that. Right? You need to undo that within yourself. What I'm telling you, though, is that you have two ways of undoing that. One way is to follow the natural love path, which is developing yourself in natural love. And one way is to develop yourself in a combination of natural love and divine love. That's the other way. The divine love way is faster than the natural love way. The divine love way is infinite, whereas the natural love way stops at the sixth year, or stops when you become perfect again. In other words, without those emotional damages that have created you to do the acts that you might have done or chosen to do here on earth. So can I just finish that then? So can you see how once this soul begins an act 
of violence towards itself, because that's really what every act is. Every act in disharmony with love is an act of violence towards yourself initially, but also towards others. But every act of harmony, disharmony is an act of violence towards yourself, that your soul has a consciousness of what it should be doing as well. What you would say is its instinct with regard to natural love. And what happens is the differential between the instinctual consciousness and what you actually do creates the law of compensation. In other words, when you become conscious of this instinctual consciousness that you have, and you become conscious of what you've done, you will see a great disharmony between the two things, and you will feel shamed of yourself and guilty about it and all of those kind of things. That's what creates the law of compensation. It's all happening inside of yourself. And this is the beauty of what God's created. God's created all this happening inside of you. There needs to be no, there doesn't need to be any other person in existence in the universe, and you will still feel these things. Uh, and that's the beauty of the system God has created. It is self-maintaining. It maintains itself. God doesn't have to go, oh yeah, I saw him do that this week, and I saw her do that this week. No, no, you know, just like we tell our children, Father Christmas does, right? <laughs> God doesn't do that, because God doesn't have to. God created a system that's perfectly flawless. And, and our soul, it choices, depend on how it works with us. So it's all about your choices. So that's a very important thing to ponder upon and meditate upon if you want to develop your life spiritually. AJ, I, don't, I um, can't understand, yeah. possibly hear me. Yeah. Um, if God is a God of love and perfect love, and God created um, the two first beings, mm -hmm. they had no parents who gave them any flaws that they had. Spot on. God created a perfect world. Spot on. How could they possibly have something within them that conflicted with God's perfect love? Um, this is a major mistake that most people make with regard to the, the free will choices. The truth is that your choice to be at one with God is not based upon your emotional injuries. So I'll say that again. So but if God say, created yeah. them... He would have created perfect beings. But what's your definition of perfect? Like God. Yeah, um, see, see in this, God's is a, image. this is the major mistake that most people make with regard to the incarnation of the soul. Here's the soul. We said the soul incarnates. The soul was created in the image of God, but it only has natural love instinctively in it. It does not have divine love at that point. It has the opportunity to choose to receive divine love. In other words, it has the opportunity to choose to enter a personal relationship with God. Right? It has natural love as an instinctual quality built in. Every single soul has that. So what, we, what you're assuming is that perfection in natural love is the same as perfection in divine love. And that's not the case. The only perfect being in the universe is God, the self. Right? If, we, if, if you think of God as infinitely perfect, then where are we? We are always working towards more perfection, are we not? Can you see that? So how can we ever say that we are perfect? We can't, can we? Because we're progressing towards this infinite perfection that God is. And so there's, we often make this mistake in then believing that we're infinitely perfect, which of course we can't be unless we progress in divine love, and that is a choice. Right? So the truth is that actually the natural love was in this soul, and when they incarnated Amon and Amen, the first human couple, the female I am and the male I am, when they first incarnated, they were perfect in their display of natural love but they still had free will. They could still choose to do whatever they desired and whatever they wished. And when you talk to the both of them, you will, and many of you will have an opportunity at some point in your lives to talk to Hamon and Amen. You will, you will, you will start he hearing from them what emotions in them began to be developed. And, ev and this is something most people don't understand about, it, about desire. Desire grows. 
desire is fed by you. Right? So you know how you can meet somebody and not feel any for anything for them at all, right? And then the next week, you can meet them again and actually have a bit of a feeling for them, can't you? And then a week later, you feel a bit stronger for them. And maybe a few weeks later, you're even starting to feel quite romantic about the person, right? Maybe. Even though right at the beginning, you didn't have that. Now, how did that happen? It happened by you nurturing your desire. And it grew. Now, this is the same as your relationship with God. This is how you grow in your relationship with God. You need to nurture your desire. Now, what, what Ammon and Amman did was they nurtured their desire in the opposite direction. They wanted to become gods, and they decided they didn't want to nurture their desire towards God. They wanted to nurture their desire towards developing themselves and take, you know, being responsible completely for themselves without their connection to God. So they chose to walk away from God through nurturing that desire. So the desire began, and there's a very good simile in the Bible, you know, in the Genesis, in the book of Genesis, that actually says that, you know, they, that Eve saw the apple, right? <laughs> Is the analogy. The apple being the object of her desire. But the reality is, both Ammon and Amman saw the apple, and if we could use the term apple, the apple was their object of desire, and they grew in their desire for that object to such a point. And the object, by the way, was to be gods themselves. And they grew in that desire to such a point that they walked away from God and from God's truth. They regretted it, um, even while they were on earth. Um, but they didn't know how to walk back after that point. And they only found out after, after I'd become at one with God how to walk back towards God.